you bring up in your book um, the GI Bill. Yeah. Uh, veterans come back from World War II. They they're given a head start um, uh, with by the government with certain advantages: go back to school, buy a home, loans, et cetera, et cetera. But it wasn't for all veterans. And so, what are the what is the domino effect today that we're seeing from this program? Well, I think the GI Bill also. Uh, first-time homebuyer loan programs after World War II. So between 1945 and, say, the mid-70s, uh, we, the taxpayers, invested in things that put millions of families, almost all of them white, on the wealth-building express train. Uh, I, I, uh, I have friends and family members who got Veterans Administration or Farmers Home Loans, 1% 40-year fixed-rate loans. Those were racially discriminatory. Uh, black, Latino, First Nations veterans returning to uh, the United States after World War II to sometimes Jim Crow education systems did not have access to some of those GI Bill college benefits. So it's kind of like we, we put one segment of society on the express train mm. to middle class opportunity and we left people of color standing at the station for the train that didn't show up. And so a couple generations go by you know, lo and behold, our home ownership rate, the white home, home ownership rate is about 70 percent, and black home ownership rate is like 43 percent. That, we can point back to that period after World War II as, as one of the reasons that, for that. It goes that far back, wow. Um, but what's interesting about that is that gave us a clue as we, we sort of know something about what to do. Like, we used to tax wealth at higher levels and, and higher incomes, and we invested in public goods, access to education, first-time home buyers, infrastructure. Those are all things that are part of a shared prosperity economy that we could do without the uh, discrimination and, and, and legacy of racism in uh, implementing those.